No, I'm saying I think, I think I can drive him out of here in a week. With what? His aura. Yeah. No! <laughs> I thought you were fucking. Uh, 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 you do the. Uh, you, do, you do the rap. Oh yeah, Kirk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Child can do this. Duck soup did it. Whatever the fuck his name is. I turned the air conditioning on because at some point it was air 70, conditioning. It was seventy two. It was seventy two. Twenty degrees outside. You lower the heat. You don't put on the AC. <laughs> oh, find a cross and fuck it. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of KMS Reloaded. I guess season two, episode one. Um. When I was doing this show, I thought I would just do like a normal recap, recap all four shows. Uh, quickly, when I started going through the video, I realized that we were just going to focus on the producer saga this week. Throw out all that other shit and just focus on the craziness that was that producer spot. Uh, it is a balmy 15 degrees out here, so I'm freezing my little Tic Tacs off. For you guys. So... We start off the very first show, the January 2nd show, with Dave Cullinane. Whoever is buying this home has to have a lot of clothes. Yeah. Because there is so much closet space in this master bedroom. And then there's a walk-in. Oh, check out this bathtub in here. This great deep Ooh. soaking tub. Great shower that you fit your family. And Justin Trudell with Gus and Coleman behind the plate doing the producing, or at least attempting to. The show starts off hot off the disaster that was the best of, the 15 hour best of. This suggests a bigger problem. That's my issue with it, is laziness, ineptitude, uh, just a failure to get something done. The fact that it was 15 hours is mind boggling to me. Like, it should, it should have been closer to 15 minutes than 15 Oh, hours. shit, by the way. Fucking Dave at the end of that clip. You know, just got to throw that last little zing in there. Um, one of the things that's funny about Gus is when he's getting pressed, he's always, like, squirming. He's always, like, fidgeting and stuff like that. Whereas, like, Coleman's just sitting there, like, you know, like his fucking dog just died. Um, you know, you have to wonder with Gus, is there a lot more than just, like, weed and fucking caffeine going on there? I mean, we'll wonder about that and someone else later on... Uh, as Justin will point out to us. But Gus is definitely looking stressed. Um, you know, Kirk's upset, but he handles it pretty well, all things considered. Like, he could have absolutely exploded on these guys for kind of how that best of thing went. Um, and then he kind of reveals what he heard at that Papa Gino's uh, affair. And somebody said to Gus, what do you think of the best of? How's it going? And this was the Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever before Christmas break, I think. I want to say Papa Chino's Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, and Gus said, I have 77 different things I, ha I have to figure out what it's going to be. And right there, I, I, I said, I'm going to watch this fire go. Yep. I said, this is a disaster. This is not going to get done. There's no chance it's going to happen. I'm going to sit back and watch these. And, and you may say, Kirk, that's bad leadership. Like, you should step in. But I said, these guys have to learn how to swim on their own. Uh, and it, it was, I thought it was going to be a disaster. I undersold it. Like, it was like, I thought it was going to be like a little kid's plane breaking. Like, a little. this was 9-11. And I think we can tell from what Kirk's talking about right there in the production value and just how bad it is. Uh, it's done on that best of episode. I mean, when you're introducing segments that don't exist on the podcast, when you're like having 15 to 20 seconds of dead air in between segments, and to think of it this way, this stupid, shitty fucking show... And then all the other shows on, like, the KMS network, they respect your time more than those two guys. Because even we wouldn't leave fucking dead air like that in a show. And I understand it's not 15 hours, but still, it's, it's the idea. Even us fucking bums wouldn't do something like that. And, you know, the, the awful, like, Hamas uh, fucking hostage video, like, like almost like... Gus and Coleman are about to get sentenced and their heads fucking locked off. I mean, it was just awful. And he, Coleman admits it right away that it was terrible. And it's like, dude, if it was terrible, like, why didn't you fucking change it? I, I don't know. 
I, I, I really don't get it. Um, but yeah, you, you would never see that on a KMS network show, let alone a Barstool Sports podcast. Fucking 15 seconds of dead air. So anyway, so Gus gets pressured by Kirk and then just immediately fucking folds. Why wasn't it done? What do you mean, why wasn't it done? Like... You don't understand what I'm at. What, 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 what don't what, you understand? Uh, what, do you, what do you think? Of, what do you think I mean when I say why like, well, wasn't it? What do you think it is? I mean the best of. You got it. Like Kirk says, uh, Gus has always said this was his project, and I mean, obviously Coleman should have done his leg too, but so did fucking Gus. You know, like Coleman's got like this all shucks look on his face, which is kind of fucking annoying, but he also looks like he knows he fucked up, whereas someone like Gus, he's always looking like defensive, and that doesn't flow with Kirk as we all know like he doesn't play that shit he wants you to fall on that fucking sword and, and Gus just had excuse after excuse after excuse you know I was gonna like do like a smash cut of all Gus's lies but I, this show's gonna be long enough as it is that I, I really couldn't even I couldn't even get it done because I, I, I couldn't fucking waste all that time cutting up his lies but it's just lie after lie after lie after lie Colin Ains trying to get Coleman to take shots at Gus and Gus to take shots at Coleman. They are doing it, but it's kind of like half-assed. They're not really going at each other full bore. Coleman's definitely taking more shots um, at Gus than Gus is at Coleman, but, you know, it is what it is. Then there's a whole Charger debacle, which could easily take... I'm fucking freezing. That could easily take a whole episode of the show as it is. It's still ongoing on Twitter as of the filming of this. Like... The back and forth about this Charger. I mean, there could be a Netflix documentary on this fucking Charger debacle. There are some of the best detectives in the universe on the case, so I'm sure there's more to come on that. You know, but Gus does have one moment of clarity, as Gus usually does in the episode, and, you know, I, no one says it better than Mr. Gus. One probably because what I felt is was not... What I felt was funny and important, probably in the grander. Thank you, Gus, for that. That was very informative. Um, and then Gus admits to not doing a core requirement of his job. I mean, literally, like associate producer 101. It's like the thing with Jeff D. Lowe and, and Menners. Like, if you, you're gonna listen, we did this already. We went yeah. over this, Gus. Yeah. You're not listening to the whole clips for best of. Like, you didn't listen. So it's the best of the year, the best of the Kirk Minahan show, right? Yes. This is, to me, the core of it. Yes. And there were just segments you're like, oh, that was a good segment. And you listen to the whole thing, you just put it up there without knowing everything that's in there. Yeah. Okay, stop the music for a second. All kidding aside. Nope. Like, this is, like, I don't know. Like, what would a normal person do, Gus, if, if somebody said that to their boss? What would the boss generally do? Fire him. I wonder if Kirk should, in order to let... Gus keep his job if he's still interested in him doing that. I wonder if he should, like, make him get drug tested or something. I wonder if that would be something Kirk would even be interested in doing. You have fucking have him have Gus pay for it out of his own pocket, but just get him randomly piss tested. So you want to keep your job? You want to prove that you're you know you want to be here and you want to contribute? You quit doing the drugs, and you could prove it by fucking pissing. And I wouldn't be shocked if his performance fucking goes up if he gets off the fucking weed. And I would have, my like pothead self from five years ago would be making fun of me so bad for saying that, but it's fucking true. There are some people that can't handle it. I'm fucking one of them, and he clearly is one of them as well. Um, but you know, there's a little bit more to the show that, you know, the guys get into some other stuff, but that's essentially for, to keep it moving, that's essentially it. And the guys get suspended. And then that's pretty much it. On to the next show. Next thing you know, it's January 3rd. And we have the one, the only, Mick Behind the Dish. And Dave, who, you know, he's been on the show, I don't know how many times now. It's been like a handful now. Dave, really good appearance. Um, he's really good on the show. This was his best appearance by far. Not to say that he was bad or anything before. Let me say that right now. But he... Um, he did really good on the show. I'd like to see him on the show again. I know he's on the network and stuff, but I'm not really familiar with him from there. But it's it's just a wild show to watch and, and cut clips for knowing what happened. 
uh, knowing like all the bullshit that happened with Mick freaking out. I gotta put my wood on the fire. Mick freaking out. Fucking Mick, man. He's one of those people where you wanna root for the kid. You wanna root for Mick, but after the shit he pulled, you can't fucking take off on the show. You can't leave the show running, dude. You can't leave the fucking show running. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, where were we? All right, so. Oh yeah, this first cut, this first cut is fucking priceless with again, hindsight being 2020. I would say more than anything, it just shows disrespect. Um, they don't, I don't think either of them realize the opportunity this is. Oh boy, here, here we, we go. go. But, it, <laughs> is but I mean, what, what do you want me you to say? Want me to just put on the table? I mean, if you want it, you can you can touch it if you want. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to say? You want to look at it? Like, <laughs> Jesus Do you understand Christ. what I'm saying though? Like, no, I, it's really confusing, Mick. No, I don't understand what you're saying. How, how can you have this opportunity and just blow it like that? And then we get the big news. I tried. About Gus and his future. My guess is like, I'll talk to him and probably say, hey, look, like this just isn't working out. Like it's just, for me, it's just we're at the point where it's just not working out anymore. That must have just absolutely fucking crushed Gus. That absolutely, he must have been smoking that fucking indica and that gravity bong when he heard that fucking 9.30 in the morning, you know, like 30% indica just fucking, just smoking his problems away. Not saying I've ever done that, uh, but. Really not a good way to start your day, Gus. I feel so bad for him, but it's like, what the fuck? He did it to himself. I do have sympathy for him, but I think he's just like a lazy guy who likes to watch video games, play video games and like likes to sit around and that's okay. But like, I'm, I, that's on me. I missed, I, that's, I just didn't hire the right guy for that. Imagine being someone like, you know, like Gus or someone like me or one of these other wackos that wants to get in there and, and do this job. And you finally get it. Like, he beats out everybody else. And then Kirk Minahan says that to you. Your boss says that to you. Um, what a kick in the balls that must have been for Gus. Regardless if he did it to himself or not. But that, that must have been a kick in the balls to hear that. So then Mick, you know, fucking Mick's like a boxer. He lines up to take another, you know, shot to the liver or something. And that comes right after he was lying here the day that I was here right before Christmas. Remember with the colony and Christmas thing? Like he, it's just... He wants, like it, he, he, wants wants it it. he wants it bad. He wants it, he wants it I bad. Feel like, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm worried about Gus. I'll, I'll just... Oh, shut up. I am. Shut up. I really am. I swear to God, I am. Worried about him how? You shouldn't be able to accept this type of punishment and be okay with it. What, he, what's he supposed to show up to work today? No, no, no. Like the back and forth and the... the like the, I didn't cut the clips. Why didn't you do it? I don't know. Like, there's no, like, I'm just an idiot. And he laughs it off. And you're like, what am I supposed to say here? What a weird thing to hear knowing what happens 24 hours later. It's so fucking bizarre to hear him talk like this, knowing he snaps the next day. Just absolutely loses his fucking shit. But then Kirk tells Gus he's got one more chance. But I was actually pretty, I was pretty surprised at this. I mean, Kirk's not... Kirk's not the monster I don't think everyone uh, makes him out to be. You know, he's definitely not. He helps a lot of people behind the scenes and shit, but I was kind of shocked to see him give Gus another chance. Like, if he says to me, hey, Kirk, I want to come in the studio and make a pitch to save my job. He can do that. There we go. He can do that, but, like, if it's bullshit 40 seconds in and it's half-assed, he's fucking gone. Oh. David does, like, this weird thing where he, like, finishes... Kirk's last word in the sentence. He does it a few times. I don't know if anyone else picked up on it, but it was fucking weird. Anyway, um, where the hell was I? <laughs> Sorry, I got sidetracked. So then we got Mick saying something. I, I picked up on this. So this cut right here I'm about to play is Mick saying something, and it's actually not that unreasonable, but it goes to show you it's all about the delivery because he is saying the same thing basically 24 hours later. And it comes across completely different. I'm telling you right now, I just have a gripe with him getting the job over me. Like, of course I'm angry about it. Of course I want right, you. Like a, a, no, no, and out. then I also look at him and he's incompetent back here. And I'm like, yeah, he could do a much better job. What the hell? And then for all Mick's bravado, for all his bluster, 
Kirk asks him for sound, and he does the same thing Gus does. I have yeah. I don't have many from that. I have all of the Menders' solo one and all of the Stephen Gloucester solo one. So you don't have any of the John Schramm one? I have no, no. Nope. You say I, you don't but you say you don't have many though. No, you I said you have none. I, I misspoke, I'm sorry. Here we go. See, I missed this, this, this is this is sorry, did lie. I did not he that's a lie. No, that's no, a no. He was covering his no. I, I did not, not cut any audio produ- from John Scranton show. I speak rattle producer. Like I've rather okay. more, that's him. All right. Like, when you sent me that you you just lied right there. No. <laughs> unbelievable. You're okay. fucking unbelievable. I, I, I'll Mick, say you're it. fucking unbelievable. I will tell you I lied, but I did not lie. I misspoke. You're fucking unbelievable. I did not oh, cut the John I Scranton audio. How did you lie Zero today? Day. Zero cut. I didn't like I'm not lying. <laughs> fucking Kirk. I speak rattled producer. If there was anyone that was fluent in rattled producer, it would be that son of a bitch. Kirk Minahan. My God. Not just rattled producer, rattled anybody. Is there anyone that you've ever been a fan of that you've seen rattle more fucking people? When I went on Twitter, the uh, one of the first things I saw on someone's page, I can't remember who it is, I apologize, was the cut of him calling Che's daughter a cunt. And it's just like, holy shit. I don't know how, but I already forgot about that. I already forgot that that happened. The dude is a fucking maniac. Anyway, getting sidetracked again. But yeah, he. Ra- I speak rattled producer. Holy shit, does he? Um, you know, Mick. Uh, I keep saying, it, but I wanna. I wanna be like. I wanna like. Kind of give Mick a little bit of a thumbs up. Like, yeah, you know, good for you. You stuck up for yourself. He's like the good like mixture of ballsy and stupid, kinda. But uh, he just blows it. The next episode. It's so hard for me to be a fan of his. This episode, when I know what happens. Uh, the guys get into a bunch of other stuff. Um, they get into Barstool, Whitlock, Aaron Rodgers, Turtle Boy. They do some calls, which have been really good lately. But like I said earlier, we're going to stick to the script. We're going to stick to the, the main uh, storyline for this week, the producer saga. So I don't really, I'm not interested in talking about any of that stuff. Um, and like I said, I want, this is a pretty, you know, positive, other than Mick taking shots at Gus, this has been a pretty positive episode as far as like Mick's role in the show. And it, I like this cut because it's just two, dare I say, equals just, you know, saying goodbye to each other at the end of the show. Are you in tomorrow, Mick? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mick's in tomorrow. Whenever you need. You, that a boy, Mick. And now we get to the, the big finale, January 4th. Dun, dun, dun. We got Mutt and Mayo with Mick at the helm. What could fucking go wrong? The venom from Mick is there the second the audio only version of the show goes up because we don't. Obviously, we missed the beginning on YouTube, as pretty much anyone who's watching this dumb show knows. Let me know when YouTube's up. Just hit send. Hmm? I just hit send. Okay, is your wireless better? Is it going to be okay, or what are we doing? I think it's going to be right. I hope. And then, as it seems to be always in the center of the Kirk Minahan universe, munchkins are controversial. Uh, Kirk asks Mick if the munchkins are from him, and fucking chaos ensues. Uh, No, those aren't mine. Mick, you brought those munchkins. Why are you lying, Mick? I'm not lying. Who brought them in, then? I don't know. They were just here when you walked in. Yes. Oh, I put them on your desk. And I Nick, I'm, a, I'm, a, I, I, I'm not doing bits either. I didn't okay. want to open the show like this. I, I'm, I'm not in my fork today. Trust me. I would want to. Oh, have a con- okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. No, you're, you're, you're definitely. Yeah. You're not doing that yeah. about bits yeah. at all. No. Okay. It's a bit free Thursday. <laughs> well, what's wrong with you? You know what's wrong. I mean, you know, like I, I'm here working for free, doing this while well, I, I don't care. I, I don't care about that. I don't care about that. You, I, you I, offered. You can leave. You offered. You can I, leave. I want to be here. You offered. Go get me. Can you get me one of those waters from the that room in there, please? From Judd. You know what I mean? In the. I can when I'm done with this conversation. I will. I'll can you take your headphones off and just get me a water, please? I'm thirsty. Can I have this conversation, please? We'll do it after. Go get the no, water. No, we, we can have it now. I know, which, I, I know how this works. I, I, I got okay, it. Okay, you're fired. Goodbye. Okay. You can leave. You can leave. All right. So make sure we get somebody to set this up then. Or you can just go get me a water like a producer's supposed to do. It's your, it's your call. I'm not your producer, Kirk. <laughs> you're here producing, Mick. You offered to do this, Mick. No, nope. right. you can leave anytime you want. No, no, no. I, you gonna, can do, I don't want to hear about this free stuff. You, is, but all, you, all, you all know, day yesterday? No, you, you offered, all day you yesterday. offered, shut up. You offered wow. to do this. You offer to do this. You can leave. I have no problem the, being here. Whenever the fuck you want. I just you can't, can leave. I can't. 
I hate you. So you I can leave whenever you want. I can't be here if you're going to say these things like, oh, we don't know if Gus is going to be here. We don't know if he's going to be here in two weeks. We don't know how it's going to go. I, I need. I can't do that anymore. What are you, a scorned fucking wife? No, I'm what not going to keep doing this. I'm not going to keep doing this. I don't. I want to either work here or not. What do you? Nobody said. Nobody promised you a job. I didn't say they did. Are you fucking? Are you insane? Seriously? Are you fucking? Crazy? No, this is what you did, <laughs> guys. And I know I've said it a million times already, but watching these shows back to back is literally insane. It's probably the best KMS moments in KMS history. I'm always biased, uh, recency biased for this show, but it's like the best fucking like three episodes. Mix, mix like 180 is the best like two episode stretch in the history of KMS. Gus is in here. You offered to do this right. while Gus is in here. Right. And nobody last said, night I'm driving home and I'm thinking to myself, I go, why am I even doing this? Then right don't now? do it! Because nobody's then like, don't do this. I, it's not I, I, I like this show. I, I love this then show. Do it. And I want to work then here. Do it. But okay, I don't, I don't need to it. be here just to be on the then air. Leave. I want to work here though. I want Stay to work leave. here. Stay or leave. I, I don't, don't give a shit either way. I'm not gonna do it for free. I'm willing to come in here and sit next to Gus as well. Great. So what? Yeah. What does that do with For that? free. So then the YouTube portion kicks off with a bang. And I noticed this when I was editing this part. But if you look over Kirk's left shoulder for a good chunk of this whole, for the, all the rest of these cuts, you'll see Mick reflected off of um, something behind Kirk. And you see just Mick doing this the whole episode. It's pretty funny. So make sure you're watching over Kirk's left shoulder. And without further ado. The attitude is unreal. Like you're a cocky unreal. shit who's earned nothing. No, I actually have. That's 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 not no, true. No. I, I've, I've I've worked for you now for a, a, what months now? Months before this, a, a whole month before this, working completely for free, unpaid internship. Let's call it that. What is this now? Two weeks, Gus, keeping a seat warm. What is this? Why if, am I here? If you were me, I don't know. If you were me, because you offered to do it, dummy. If you were me, would you hire you right now? No. The way you're acting. No. Of no. Course. No. 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 <laughs> no. So then why? So why would I no. do it? So then why would I do? What's wrong with you? Yeah, I just frustrated. I don't. I don't. I feel like I'm getting a raw deal here. Mick, I legitimately don't know. What's going to happen is in about two weeks, Gus is going to come in here. It's going to be a great show and it's going to move forward. And I'm ha I'm okay with that. Oh, I can tell. No, I can use definitely seem you'll be fine with that. <laughs> I, 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 you think you deserve a job? I don't yeah, know. absolutely. Okay. I, I don't think you do right now. Okay. Like you seem really unstable. No, I'm, I'm plenty stable. I'm okay. just very fried. Right. I, 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 I don't work here. I don't have I'm, access to any of this. I'm, I'm getting say, shit on. It's about, ridiculous. Was, by me? I just, I was about yeah, to you say. tweeted out. You, just, you sewered me in a tweet yesterday. It's a joke, Mick. This is the show. You fucking pussy. Yeah. I mean, honestly, you're being, yeah. Mick, you're, Mick, you're being, you are being a pussy. The strangest thing is how he blames Kirk for it. He is so mad about the situation. As Kirk says, he calls him a scorned lover. He says that. Kirk is a, Kirk's like, almost like, is a bad person because he doesn't want to give Mick the job. How dare you, Kirk? What a piece of shit you are. Oh, man, this was a good idea, doing this when it's fucking 15 degrees out. You know, one of the things that is really unique about Kirk is he lets all of us retards fucking come in off the street. And like, who else does that? Who, what other major podcast besides Michael Gary, who's just desperate? I'm just kidding, Mike, I love you. But no, but seriously, who the fuck does that? Nobody. And for him to, like, it's insulting. It's insulting kind of to everybody who goes in there that, like, everyone who likes, look at Montante. Montante was in fucking tears over that job. And you're just going to fucking walk out when it, the fucking things are running? But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. I got to stop. You just said that. You no, don't want to hear about it. You've been holding this over my head now for how long? Like, I, you, I've, I've applied for this job three years ago. That's your problem, Mick. I came mine. in here three different times. I've done, Mick, I, who, Mick, like, Mick, whose issue is that? Uh, yeah, it's clearly mine. Correct. So I, I just, I'm this Mick, man, I, Mick, you, I don't care. I, 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 I don't mean this to be an asshole. If you leave the studio and float away, I, I really I, don't care. I understand like, that. Like, my life goes on. I like, understand nice, that. You, I appreciate all the work you've done. Yep. Yeah, all that. for sure. Yeah. Okay, Mick, I don't appreciate it. What do you want? Like, you know, you, let me just say this. Your brother is definitely wrong. For, <laughs> I'm sure your brother is definitely the one who's wrong about this. <laughs> Everybody's watching doesn't think you're a fucking lunatic.
I, I think coming here and not expecting anything over and over again, that would be lunacy. That's what you've been doing. Yes. According to you and for the last done, three I'm, years. I, I, can't, okay. I can't keep doing it. You've been there like eight times last three years, but okay, great. Yeah, Fantastic. no, that's, yeah. This dude was perfectly grateful like 24 hours ago. Perfectly grateful, like blowing Kirk. I assume you want the job. Yes. Okay, and as I've said to you, you didn't get the job. I right. chose Gus. Right. Right now, Gus is suspended for two weeks. Right. My guess is he's probably not going to be back. That's. But you want to hear me say something I'm not sure I, I, I'm sure of yet, so I'm not going to do that either. Like, why would I do that if I don't know if it's true? To appease you? No. For a no. job that you might not even get anyway? Like, that's why what I'm saying. Would... Why would I be here then? To appease you for a job that well, I'm not going to get? you're here. You are here. Because I want the job. I want to work for the show. I, I don't know how else I can say it. I, I understand that, Mick, but right now, there isn't a job. I'm supposed to sit here and say, if uh, Gus maybe, doesn't want maybe, the job... Maybe be patient for a week and a half and see what happens, then freak out? What about the last three years? Like, that's what I'm saying. Did you don't you didn't miss the job? It's you didn't get the job? You didn't get the job. What do you want me to say? What do you think this says about you? If you looked inward at all and said, what, what can I do better? Yes. What have I done wrong? Okay, yes. and what did you come up with? As far as, like, a day-to-day? -day? Just in general. I can be more patient and stuff like that. But <laughs> like, I, <laughs> okay, yeah. well, you're doing a great job with that. Bang-up job with that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't even know what to say. These cuts speak for themselves. There's not even any point in saying anything. They just fucking speak for themselves. Well, it's like, how the fuck can Kirk even keep his cool with this lunacy? Kudos to him. The old producers come up and their pay scale comes up. They all got paid. Huh? They all were getting paid. Correct. Right. Yes. Would you so like to get $100? No, I'm, I don't. No, that's the thing. That's the, last thing. that's the last thing I want. I don't <laughs> want. Some, <laughs> what, what the fuck am I supposed to do? I, 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 don't, what, what? I don't want. I don't want some quick little fix. Here's 20 bucks to come do the show. I'm good with that. I want a job. That is simple. That's it. If okay. it's not promised and if it's not even potential, then just tell me. I'll leave. But I'm saying that there is that possibility. But then you go, no, oh, like, I can't win. Like, I'm, what you want me to say to you is congratulations, you have the job. That's not happening right now. And this is going to come up again, too. But is it really drugs? Is it really? It's like, I don't think it's something like that. Like, with, with Gus, I could say, yeah. But is it really drugs with Mick? Is it lack of sleep that makes him snap? Keep in mind, this can't. is somebody, though, who, again, yesterday said, he once again, he would work yeah. for free. Yeah. Right. And everything we say on this show is serious and literal. Absolutely. Oh, you, you're telling me those were jokes? No. Kirk, this is the so same no, thing so the producer search. I would work here as if there's an opportunity on the horizon. I don't so know how hard free, it is. then? For a certain amount of time, yes. I'll, I'll like, prove yourself type of deal. How many times are we going to talk about this? We, I've, I've said this to you well, so many times. But yeah, but now you're screaming about how you need a job. No, I don't, do you, need, you I don't see, need a job. I, you see I, the... I, I, it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. I don't know. You're, you're acting as if like I have some crazy gripe to want to come in here. And Why would I think that much? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Puppet Master Kirk, just with the, the marionette, just pulling the strings, just, you know, Kirk keeping his cool so that way he can keep the content flowing, but just pulling the strings like he always does. And then, and, oh, fucking smoke. And then Kirky Bits comes out. Mr. Kirky Bits. He's always giving people shit for doing bits. But Kirky Bits comes out and he fucking finishes off Mick. I mean, it is great. It is hilarious when you know it's coming. Uh, keep your eye on Kirk the whole time. Uh, the, the idiots are bitching about something. And then Kirky Bits comes out and just fucking fatalities uh, Mick. Just causes him to lose his fucking mind. Can Justin come in? No, Not he really. values an idiot <laughs> that'll fuck. come in here and help the show. There's the a thought. Well, he, he, he needs a producer. Has the best There's a chance that's you. getting hired. That's you. Yes, you're an idiot, but yes, he picked you. Mick, can you can you can you open this for me? I can't fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Mick, can you chew him up too? Mick, can you crawl in here and open this for me? Can then wet yourself, please? Is that, is that, is that too much to ask? <laughs> too much to ask. <laughs> you fucking loser, <laughs> baby, little oh, pussy. <laughs> Oh, fucking loser. Is Justin coming? I'm, I'm not staying here. Are you not? No. How come? I, I'm all set. And then we get his disgraceful exit from the studio. I mean, you think about you're trying to get into, into audio uh, engineering or audio production like he's doing on the side. Uh, you want to work for Kirk Minahan at Barstool Sports. If you pull up your Apple podcast app or your whatever, and you look at the top podcasts, there are a lot of them in the most popular categories like sports. you got a lot of Barstool Sports. So you could say Barstool is one of the most fucking popular podcast platforms ever to exist. You're fucking on it. You're doing a show on it. And you that's what you want to do. And what do you do? You leave while the show's running. While the fucking show's running, the biggest no-no you could ever do as a producer. 
You literally can't do anything worse other than walking up to Kirk Minahan and fucking punching him in the face. There is nothing you could do that's worse. And he fucking does it. And like, I think it's Montante points out, kind of does it like a bitch because he leaves the fucking podcast running. Mickey, Thank welcome you. to leave. Thank okay. you for your All everything. Right. All right, good luck, buddy. Good luck. Now get the fuck out of here, man. Legitimately, get out. Get out. He's walking Get out. the fuck out. Go. Get stepping, dummy. Mick is just not having it. Kirk calls him back to it. Calls him back to the mic. Just Mick's not having it. And then Kirk tells him to get the fuck out. So then the guys don't even know if the show's running. The guys literally don't even know if the show's running. So Mutt gets up and, you know, Mutt being such a helpful guy, Mutt goes and checks on the show. Uh, I, I see. Mutt, the... to be clear, you're also not being paid. For... <laughs> <laughs> if, Mickey, if you had mixed ambition for a job, Jesus Christ. Uh, so did you guys see Jersey Jerry hitting these golf balls? <laughs> this is wild. This is wild. <laughs> and kudos to Kirk, because Kirk says, hey, if you come back before the show's over, bygones are bygones. It's like, Jesus fucking Christ, Mick. He's fucking giving it to you on a platter and you still shit it down your leg, dude. You still fucking piss it away. So then the guys, they call the commissioner, Jeff D. Lowe, and his big fucking sausage are uh, shocked, absolutely appalled, right? Justin is like doing a buck 90 to the studio to try and save the day, which of course, like Justin always does, other than when he's trying to walk somewhere. Justin saved the fucking day, as usual. He's a, his own Marvel superhero. I love Justin. Even though, you know what? I'm not going to lie. I did try to go up to Justin twice at Grill on the Hill, and he wasn't very nice to me. But he could have been busy. That's all I'm saying. But I'm a huge Justin fan. I love you, Justin. Something happened. Why are you hitting your nose like that, Violet? We can make suggestions like that. What are you saying? Uh, I don't know, but something happened. Are you suggesting that Mick was on cocaine? Uh, Something snapped in him. He was on some <laughs> I don't sort think of. That, I don't think that was it. I, don't think. I think he's got real issues, and I feel. I do feel. I like Mick. I feel bad for him. I hope he's all right. He probably is a lot of fun at parties, though. He's probably right. He <laughs> seems like he's a really fun, happy-go-lucky guy at parties. I'm sure, he brings the party. Jesus. Oh, oh Justin, Justin is really Justin. alluding to a lot. My of God, here, Justin. Is something? You, is this based on any proof or no? I was just going off in the middle of the night and not sleeping. Any, any proof, though? No. So, okay, well, you, you know, you want to cover yourself legally. Uh, so then we got Mutt just being Mutt. I don't know. Was the, was the real Dave Thomas in those commercials I saw growing up the real Dave Thomas? Yes, it was. Okay. Hello. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know. I think they hired an actor to play that, that, that actor. No, a lot of shit is fake. <laughs> What? Why would you have an actor? Why would you have an actor play him though? He owned the company. Like a, he looked like a wholesome guy. Like, oh, I want to go buy at that guy's burger place. That's kind place. of the whole point, though. That's why they didn't hire an actor. I, I, you're saying everyone on TV that portrays to no. be like the owner of a restaurant is like the guy in commercials. Generally, is, is Ronald McDonald really Ronald McDonald? He, just, he, owned, he doesn't own the company. You know that? You know he's Ronald yeah, McDonald's a real he, person. He's sort right? of the, the front man for do you McDonald's. Think a, do you think it's a real person named Ronald McDonald? <laughs> There's a Ron McDonald house, right? Like a charity? Yes, he doesn't live there. There's plenty of, there's lots of those. Yeah. I thought that was a character based on the original, not McDonald's owner, because I've seen the movie. Um, that's a fair point. It was a character. You thought a clown was like, I'm making it's a burgers? Fair point. It's a fair, well, listen. Did you think they had burger, clowns making hamburgers? The I thought McDonald's? Dan Thomas potentially could have been like a fictional, like fake guy that sort of like, that was like, like a very weird Wendy's. advertising campaign. It was the 80s, I don't know. Okay. My bullet point for that said, Mutt's really an idiot. Yeah, so this is the last cut before we go. Um, I figured, you know, end it on a positive note. Mick, you say all the time, too, like, I'm younger than you were. When you, like, Mick thinks that he's going to have, like, a big career. He's not. Like, I'm not being a dick. Like, he's not a curious person. He's not self-deprecating. He's not funny. He's not thoughtful. Like, he's not going to be a success in this career. I know he doesn't want to hear that. But that's just, I'm just telling him the truth. Like, oh. it, it, like I don't want to, I, I it can be an uncomfortable conversation. He's not going to like hearing it. But like, he should honestly take a week, go to Al and be like, Al, teach me how to do this HVAC stuff. Oh. Like, I'm serious. Oh, I think going to say, teach him how to podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. Or that. So I know that there's a whole other episode, but I don't really see the point in recapping the recap, even though there's a lot of gold in that, um, that show with Mike and Justin. That was really funny. Uh, but... That's the end of this episode of KMS Reloaded. I hope you like the new style, at least. This is what people wanted. People wanted cuts and drops and shit. And I figured that this is going to be the best way to do it. Um, I want to give a big shout out to everyone that made it easy for me to kind of dip my toe back into this world. Um, 
One of the things that Kirk said on Friday was he made a comment that, um, well, maybe Steve thinks he fucked up, and I did. I fucked up. I didn't handle things well, and that, that's just how I am. I literally ruined everything I touch, and I ruined last year, too. So it is what it is, but I want to thank everyone, especially Kirk, for letting me fucking come back in here without getting my balls busted just relentlessly. I'm sure it'll happen, but I want to appreciate you guys, you know, spitting on your fist before you stick it up my ass so i'll talk to you guys next week on kms reloaded see you later i fucking missed you guys no big deal no hard feelings good luck fuck you it is not a micro penis <laughs>